Happy Tuesday. I'm here to interview know, just awesome people and host the number one sales meeting in the mortgage industry every Tuesday. So today, as our guest, we have Katie Pastor out of Sacramento. What's up, Katie? You're on mute, Katie. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Gabe. Now, you have been killing it. Katie was a, a guest in Scriptapalooza. I've interviewed her multiple times. And uh, hopefully, you're going to be on stage at Sales Mastery this year. What do you think, Katie? Hopefully, I'm striving to get there. And yeah, I'm working hard to, to make that happen. So I appreciate your support, Dave. And um, most of all, just the support that you give to our community with all these awesome speakers, with all these great ideas, and just all these tips on how we can improve as mortgage planners. Yeah, I, I so appreciate it. No problem. Hopefully, Todd Duncan gets the memo. Yeah, and, Todd. Uh, I'll, I'll be sure to give him a reminder. Todd, if you're watching this, Katie Pastor, Sales Mastery this year. She rocks it. Uh, we, we, we've also got Greg Anderson out of Seattle, um, killing it with Mortgage Coach, doing Monster Production. What's up, Greg? How you doing, guys? We're doing good, man. You have, uh, I, I invite you this call because in the past few interviews that we've done, oh, you've I think shared, I lost you. Can so, you hear me? You know, it, it was me. Someone hijacked my phone. Can you guys hear me again? Can you guys yeah, hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we yeah, can, can hear you. All right. If that happens again, just carry it without me. But when someone calls me, sometimes it hijacks my phone. But, but Greg, we're, we're here to talk about mortgage strategies that help realtors sell more homes and help realtors justify that commission that they make because let's face it there's a lot of disruptors coming out of after it so uh i know you've done a lot of i've done a lot of interviews with you where you've talked about move up analysis and different mortgage strategies but uh looking forward to seeing what you have to cover today okay it looks like i'm back well, oh you are back greg Thanks. So let's let's kick it off with Scott Nicholson. Uh, folks know Scott as the seller buy down king, and uh, he's the one that brought that strategy into the community. And Scott and I have done a lot of calls on that lately. Uh, Scott, I know you have some topics beyond just seller buy down, although it you know it's kind of like new ways to package and present that strategy. But mm. knowing knowing mm. the goal today, you know how do you want to kick it off, buddy? Yeah, I think, um, the, I mean, well, well one, I, I, like we, you said yesterday, Jim, I think Jim, uh, your interview with Jim, and I thought I knew it all, and that's why I love this community, because, you know, we sharpen each other. I think I knew it all in the buy-down, and then Jim's angle of taking that and showing them, hey, you know, agent, you just earn your commission and then some. So I think that's a really important video to pay attention to because it's relative to the market and a few things I'm going to talk about. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to, and I'm going to give a lot of the people um, kind of three steps, you know, just tying all the ends together on, I want to take the buy down to my community and my people. How do I do it? What are the three steps to do it? So I'm going to focus on that and just kind of zip through that. I'll show you one that we picked up over the weekend and how that's being transpired right now. Cool. So, as you guys can see, I shared my screen. Uh, Scott is referring to this interview I did yesterday with um, Jim um, McQuaig. And so I'm gonna let him cover it, but I would just tell everybody, if your primary referral source is realtors, you gotta watch this interview. You know, he, Jim makes a really good point. I had not heard this before. I had not heard it described the way he said it. And I would just say every, loan officer in the mortgage coach community now has another competitive advantage. Like this is a game changing idea. So, so Scott, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to post this in our Facebook community. So those of you that are watching this on Facebook live, you know, in comments below, there'll be a post, mm -hmm. check it out. Uh, I would also ask you guys, let's have a conversation around this. So if you implement this and you have success, share it. And uh, anyways, go ahead. Tell us your thoughts after watching that video. Yeah, and so the, what was interesting and what he did was, you know, he just affirmed, you know, what, what was going on, how it works, and, you know, bringing value for he's speaking to his loan officers at his company at Churchill. He's speaking to them and, you know, bringing value. So 
he said in there, um, which is pretty funny because I have the same belief is, you know, when you're talking to an agent, you know, what makes you earn your 3% commission? And that's under attack. We all understand that. What makes you, you know, so compelling that you're going to earn the 3%. And I think if you take that and if we can help them, you know, earn that 3% and that's the gist of the video. So we broke down the seller buy down. It was one of my presentations. Um, I think it was Rodeo or which one of it was, whichever one it was. It was, and so it was, we got it was, into, it was Rodeo. And yes. I'll put a link so down he, below to that too. And so what he did was he goes, so what he did is the, the seller buy down cost X, right? But it saved the seller Y. And so the spread, my phone's gone off. The call between the X and the Y was what the agent who structured this, we helped structure this, that was the savings he brought back to the seller. And his, his point in there was looking, look, we saved him 60 grand by this, which is 8% of the total transaction. So it's that right there is justifying back to the seller, it, you know, what they, why the agent is earning the 3%. And that's so much more powerful than, hey, I market your property great. I'm going to put it up on Zillow. I'm going to do this and do that. And I think that's a really big takeaway because there's two things I learned from this community on the seller buy down. Number one, I love how Jim took the savings between cost, you know, cost of it to implement it and the savings to produce it, right? And then taking that back and helping the agent go back into the seller um, saying, hey, I'm going to save you 60 grand in this transaction. There's a spread down there. So if you look at one of the last items highlights, you see the cost was 34, the savings was 95, the spread was six, we'll call it 60,000 for rough math, and which is roughly 8% of the total transaction. And that's, that's a great point to sit down with your agent and say, I'm going to help you look better in that seller's perspective and justify why you can earn it. And something that kind of come, came to mind is, why are we not doing this on every single listing appointment? Why are not we preparing our agents when they go to a listing appointment? If things get into trouble and we got to get into a price reduction or it's getting stale, we show this immediately up front. So I'm going to save you 60000 So it immediately spins the conversation. And that's what I teach, changing the narrative with the consumer. How are we going to change the narrative? And from a realtor's perspective, it's like, you know, well, so-and-so can list me for this and do that and this. And they're being caught. This is we are as rates and fees. So I think, and what I'm going to do off Jim's presentation yesterday I'm going to all my agents going, I want to prepare this for your new listing presentation. You arm it, unpack it, show it. There's my plan B. If we can't sell it as is, we're moving into that. That's number one. Number two, and the second big thing I've taken away from peers in this group, this probably might be the best counter mechanism for listing agents. And so my next class, which I was actually going to teach one this morning at nine. My next class, my, and I'm speaking to imagine a group full, a room full of agents or one on one or whoever you're teaching going, guys, I want everyone to hold their hand up. Who has gotten a low ball offer recently? I promise you, majority of those hands are going to go up. Okay. So now that we've all understand, we've all gotten those low ball offers. What are you going to do? Don't get defensive. That's just the nature of the market. As inventory starts to build, as the consumers talk, you mean being commodity, you're being commoditized in the consumer's perspective, what is your strategy? How are you going to counter that? And so what we do is now I'm going to do a presentation. Let's just say it's this property. So the lowball offer in this case, even though I was representing the buyer in this one, the buyer wanted that 750 house for a 650 price. Well, I'll work with the seller and the listing agent saying, how much do we have to net here? What's our value of your property? Then I'm going to jump in the equation, produce a TCA or seller buy down flyer, and we're going to start countering all of the buyers and buyers agents in our listings now. So those are the two takeaways that I've never even thought about in the 12 years of doing seller buy down, I think are really impactful in today's market. And so take away for me and can watch it for yourself, everybody, is that when you put together a mortgage coach and you are dollarizing and quantifying 
the value of different strategies. And think of it like rent versus own. What's the five-year value of owning versus renting? When you're doing a move-up analysis and you look at the, the impact over five years, seven years, 15 years, uh, seller buy-down, when you show, hey, I'm going to bring a creative financing strategy to help sell your home and you quantify it, that's realtor value. That's value that the realtor can take to bring to the family to say, hey, working with me, I'm an expert. I'm going to help you get the best price, whether it's a buyer or a seller. And then I'm going to help you work with the right lender that's going to help you build wealth and pick the best mortgage. That's realtor value. And let's face it, competition is coming after them. I'm going to show one more thing, and then I want Katie to share something. And if you guys have any questions for Scott, bring it. But guys, you know, this, this is the competitive landscape for lenders springtime last year. This is the battlefield this year. And, and it's no different for realtors. You know, realtors are now, they have disruptors coming after them. They have Zillow getting in their space. They have Redfin looking to disrupt them. You know, so, so the, the, the battlefield has changed for both lenders and realtors. And in some ways, realtors are even more concerned. They have more commission to protect. And so that's why mortgage strategies. Coming in and not just doing prequels, rates and fees. I get you this rate this time to close the loan on time. But no, I'm going to help you show your clients how to build wealth and then use that, you know, teach realtors how to be advisors and teach realtors how to bring quantifiable value to the equation. So, so anyways, I think uh, Jim did a great job explaining it. Scott, any more quick notes? Cause I want to just kind of go round and round, have each of you guys share for 10 minutes. And then remember community, if you're watching this live, we will answer your questions live. And if you're, you know, listening to the recording, still ask questions, make comments, and we'll, we'll answer them after the fact. Any other quick hits, Scott? Yeah, I think, I think that's really important that that's going to rear, start to rear its head. And I think I'm a, I'm a believer. I mean, I've been at, you know, being a, an ex golf pro, I, there's stuff I can't focus on, right? So just focus on what I control. There's a ton of noise and a ton of tech and all this stuff, but there's one thing I'm keeping my finger on and watching. It's actually that lawsuit, right? Um, that the, the buyer's transaction or the buyer, you know, agent and so on, you know what I'm talking about? Of course. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, yeah. So, so, everybody so think of, think about this, right? So that lawsuit win or lose, right? For that, uh, whoever that was in Minnesota, there's a couple more there win or lose. That's going to cause impact in the community, right? The real estate community and how consumers look at them. So if it wins, it could be devastating immediately. If they, even if they lose, it's still going to be devastating. So think of if you, if you take that lawsuit and then you take what I just, what Jim just explained and me, I'm going to implement in my business is how can I help that agent really bring value to the consumer? Then that, that lawsuit almost is not relative, right? Because really the nut of the lawsuit is, the value that's being created there. And it's, you know what I mean? So I think that's something I'm going to tie together that lawsuit and then what I'm doing so I can bring continued value into those agents. Um, so I think it's really important uh, to understand the strategy and how you can help those agents moving forward, win or lose of that lawsuit. The narrative is changing in that perspective. There, there is no doubt the narrative is changing. I also put a link, I love your new seller buy down websites. I put a link to that down below. When I interviewed Scott a couple Tuesdays ago, he, he talked about some new seller buy down local websites that he's doing and he's building kind of a, a tribe within the mortgage coach tribe of seller buy down black belts. So I put a link to that. If you guys want to connect with Scott on that, Scott, let's do this. Let's bring in Katie. And then yep. at the end of the call, yeah. I'll let yeah. you talk more about your, uh, your community and remember guys if you have questions post them down below in facebook live that is where i focus on the chat if you are watching this live in zoom i'll try to check out chat in there too so kb any questions for scott or any just response to what he just shared yeah um scott i our market is a little bit different in that um 
we're not seeing a ton of lowball offers, but of course they're out there, right? And I think it, it depends on the house and I de it depends on how um, it's listed and if it's listed too high. So my question for you is, are you, and two, you don't really know, or at least we don't know when we're working with a client, what their situation is going to be, what that house is going to be like once they go to submit an offer. So if I'm understanding, you're um, reaching out to the listing agent and maybe even sometimes the seller to have that conversation up front before your client's even making the offer? That's correct. Like the perfect example over the weekend, uh, we have some good family friends. Um, they found a house local here. Um, it was a for sale by owner. Uh, the house is free and clear. Comps, you know, the first thing I do when I ever do sell or buy down, the first thing I look at is where's my value, right? Because if, if it's overpriced, then come on, let's price reduce it and then get it to at least start there. So that conversation was brought, Lisa, my wife goes, hey, can you help Ryan and Paula? They want to write an offer. They're confused and what to do. And what happened was, the house, and I have a TCA, which I'll share with the community, what I did for them over the weekend. The house was like at 942. Paula wanted to come in and get it around 900, right? Well, we, we think we want to get it in here and the house is free and clear. He really likes this. So they're, and so I oh, wait, hold on a second. So I put the whole thing together and I showed them how to structure the offer. And so we, we gave them a fair offer. So I gave them at 942. I used 18 to buy it down. And the payment as if they wrote it for eight, it was like 887. So they're going, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, how does that work? So, and what's funny, going back to Dave, I gave him the video. So they looked at it. Also in my seller buy down site, I, my own site. So I gave him my site link and said, go look at everything. I have all the data information example so i gave them the actual presentation how to structure it and help them with that and then she's a teacher too like my wife's a teacher so she wants to research so i backed it with that site and so we're actually putting the offer together at a fair price for the seller taking eight back and they got a payment as if they're buying at 887. that's how we structure it hey so scott real quick um before we wrap this up if you could pull up both kitty's market of sacramento and Greg's market of Seattle on, I think you do, there's a way you do a search on Zillow. And, yep. and let's like in this, the last third of this call, let's, sure. let's, sure. let's show them how many houses in their market, you know, the seller, well, you know the deal. Let's, let's be ready to yeah, show them that because I think yeah. there's, there's a lot more opportunity than most loan officers know to, you know, there's riches in niches and this is a niche. So, it's one of those things where there's an opportunity. There's not a lot of loan officers going after it. Not, no realtors really get it. So Katie, any other questions or did you, did you get connect the dots there? Yeah, I like this. I'm, I'm getting a lot of um, value out of this and I appreciate the information, Scott. And, and I think, um, I, I guess my last question is this is, is this a strategy that you use to go out and get new business, new realtor relationships? Oh, absolutely. Hey, you know who calls me every, every other day, all my title and escrows, because I sat down with them, a couple in particular, right? They're my sales force. And they have been for the last, you know, 15 years. Um, and so what I've done is I set them, I had a meeting recently with them, a couple of them, the key escrow title agents. I set them down, showed them everything. They love it because they're starving too, but they have all the relationships and then some. They know, I mean, you stay away from this group. They're a little high maintenance and this and that. So what they're, I'm using them as my sales force. And then they're getting me in front of the big teams, the one-on-ones, or they're doing the lunch and learns and sitting down and saying, I need you to speak here for us, please. I need you to be here. I need a broker. I have a broker. I want you to come in house. So I'm utilizing those relationships to find me the best ones I can go speak to. Love it. Yeah, and I, I just, I interviewed Scott specifically on how to use this strategy to get more referrals from realtors. Um, a week or two ago, I just put a link down below where we dedicated the whole call to just, you know, realtor leads with this strategy. So, so Katie, what, what do you have today? Like, what are you doing that is helping realtors sell homes or mortgage strategies that you think are on point for home buyers right now? Sure. Yeah. So um, I've obviously adopted using Mortgage Coach and I use Mortgage Coach 
daily with every single transaction. So, um, you know, each transaction is going to be a little bit different. Right now, we're um, doing more refi business than we've done in the past. So, it is using the mortgage coach tool for a refinance to show them the benefit of the refinance, different options, different cash out options, rate term, whatever that is. I'm using mortgage coach for that. And then of course, you know, for my buyers too. So um, really what I want to talk about is I think for, you know, loan officers who are trying to grow their business and trying, trying to increase their production, there's huge opportunity to go out and um, work with these realtors and kind of get the realtor thinking about their existing database. Um, I think a lot of times realtors are focused on what's in front of me, what's coming in, you know, how do I manage that? How do I convert that? But then they forget about everything else that they have in their database. And, um, you know, there's plenty, plenty of realtors that I work with that have some pretty good databases and also um, that have bought leads in the past. Maybe they're buying leads now, maybe they did in the past, but they have kind of dropped off. They're not doing a very good job at following up with them. So, um, I highly recommend to any new loan officer or any loan officer want, that wants to increase their production, go after these realtor partners and offer to work their database with them. <coughs> Even offer to work their database for them because at least someone's touching that database. And you know, I picked up a, a um, or I should say our office picked up a realtor relationship um, that was new to us. And we offered this solution and we're just calling. We've got a, a person that's calling every single person to try and figure out, hey, did you purchase within the last two years? You know, we understand that buying a home is a big decision. Is there anything that you need from us to help with this? And um, I think the realtors feel good knowing that their database is being worked. Um, you know, they may have bought money for, for these leads. And so I think you add a lot of value to those realtor relationships when you're taking the initiative to work that database. I love, I love that, Katie. Really good point. I want you to show a mortgage strategy where you're doing that. Real quick, uh, how are you doing right now? What kind of production are you doing and how do you think you're going to do this year? Yeah, so I'm closing uh, 15 transactions this month and maybe pushing to do a, a couple more. We're getting close to the end of the month, so we'll see uh, what I end up with. Um, so that's how my, my month is. And I'm just trying to take advantage of, you know, the market that we're currently in. Obviously we're in, in, um, home buying season. We're seeing a uh, peak in refis. Um, I'm hoping to at least sustain the same level of production, um, that I'm currently seeing at least sustain that for the rest of the year. My goal is to get to at least 20 a month. Um, so wish me luck. And I'm certainly going to adopt some of these strategies that I learned from Scott to maybe, um, and some new relationships and develop some new relationships. So, and and re remind me, I, I, and I've interviewed Katie multiple times lately, but I don't remember exactly how long it's been that you've been full time as a loan officer again. Yeah, so I've been, um, yeah, so I've been with partners, gosh, four years, uh, four, I want to say four years in June, so just in a couple weeks. So, boom, just at four years and you know, over 10 a month, hitting 15, you know, shooting for 20. That's, that's awesome. Thanks. And it, it's kind of interesting because when I first, uh, first came on board with, with partners, I came from Bank of America. And so my business was very different. I did a lot, a lot of refi business and we didn't do a great job at closing those on time. So I, I knew I wanted to shift into the purchase business when I came um, over to partners and, uh, my strategy was not to work with realtors and uh, soon that changed. So within a few months, I, I really appreciated what um, realtors were bringing to the table and bringing to you know, people's lives and building relationships with, with their clients. So um, I'm honored to work with some, some great realtors and I actually love doing business with them now. Um, and that's too something else that I want to talk about is, you know, mortgage planners, I think, you'll see success when you align with the right people. Um, and I say the right people, the right people that think like you and the, the people that are doing this industry for the right reason. And that's not to sell a home, that's to build a relationship. And when you're building a relationship, you really can't put a price on that. 
So when we're talking about realtor commissions, you're building that relationship. You're there with them to, you know, find their next home, to go to those baby showers, to, you know, whatever. So um, again, I would encourage new loan officers or, or loan officers that are rethinking their business and want production, think about who you're doing business with, why are you doing business with them, and do you value the way they do business? Love that. So, so let's pull up a total cost analysis, do a quick strategy on that. Greg, you're next, and both of you, be ready to ask Katie a question uh, between, between her and Greg. And remember, community, feel free to ask questions. I know I've seen one in uh, Zoom where someone wants to uh, get a little more color on one of your seller buy-down, Scott. Can Scott put up that seller buy-down in Zoom? Oh, it's, by the way, okay, I'll put it in Zoom chat, Greg, uh, or Jeff. And uh, so, Katie, show us what you got. I'll tell you when I can see your screen. Yeah, give me just a sec. I need to get logged in here and I need to find one that I want to share. Well, let's let's come back to you on that then so you're okay. ready to go. Yeah. And any anybody have questions for Katie, uh, Scott, and then Greg? Any questions for Katie? Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, so uh, Katie, you know, good, uh, good production for only four years in the business. It's uh, absolutely killing it. And, you know, my, my question for you was, uh, you know, coming over from Bank of America and uh, being at a, at a spot where, you know, basically you're selling the low cost on the market, you know, coming, coming into, obviously you're working for a, a company that's not Bank of America. So I'm assuming you're not the lowest cost in your market. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you using Mortgage Coach to, to still win those, those relationships and those clients? Yeah, so that's a really uh, great question, Greg. And um, so I, I, when I first came on, I, I wasn't totally sure how it was going to look when it came to, you know, price and how is it going to be where I am versus these big banks. And it's interesting that you bring that up right now because um, for anybody that's on my social media and friends with me on Facebook, I posted posted this over the weekend. I had two clients within the last week that went into the of A actually, and they wanted a printout. They were, you know, getting an earnest money deposit check. I don't remember exactly what the scenario was with each one of them, but uh, the big bank strategy is we're not going to give you this information basically until you, they find out what the person's doing with this printout or this earnest money deposit check. And then they won't release that information until they have a conversation with, um, with the home loan officer. So uh, that really got me thinking and, you know, they're, they're offering interest rates that sound really appealing to a lot of people, but you do some research behind this and it's with a 740 or higher FICO and they're quoting these interest rates with points associated, right? So that has totally got me thinking about how I'm having these relationships with my clients. And um, we're so different, we're so different, meaning we as mortgage planners working for different companies, we are about the relationship. We're not about price and we're not about rate. So what I need to do a better job at, and I've got some feedback from people on my uh, Facebook, I need to do a better job at setting the expectation with realtor partners, you know, how to get that earnest money deposit transferred, and two, with, with clients, educating them that this is what you're gonna see out in the market, whether it be a big bank, whether you see it online, let's talk about why you're seeing this information. And, you know, I've been only been doing this for four years, but it's four years of constant learning of how I can do things better and, and do things differently. Um, so when, when using Mortgage Coach, now a lot of times I'm going to put in my Mortgage Coach scenario what that rate's going to look like with a cost of just under a point, let's say, or versus par. Right. So then I'm having these conversations with the clients to say, here's the difference in the monthly payment. Um, here's your break even point. This is, you know, why you're get, you're seeing this lower interest rate. And I'm I'm having more solid conversations and um, I think I'm providing more value from a financial um, aspect of the relationship when I'm educating them on here are your different options. We got 3.875 or 4.125. Here's how it looks financially. So um, I, I definitely utilize Mortgage Coach in that way to compare the different rate options and different costs associated. 
Yeah, and we, we hear a lot of mortgage coach loan officers that are actually putting a two-point option because a lot of online lenders and big banks will always you know, just show that most expensive points and fees with the lowest rate. And that's just, if you know that you're going to be competing in that land, you're, you're buying it down by even more than a point. So something to think about, Katie. Uh, yeah. Greg, did, did Katie answer that? Or Yeah, yeah. The other thing I would add to that is I'm seeing a lot of the big banks quoting a jumbo rate um, on a client that really needs to go with high balance because in, in our market, we have high balance here um, just because they don't have the reserve requirements. And so they're quoting these rates and then the client, you know, is going to find out two or three weeks down the line. And Katie, you know, having worked in that big bank, she knows that underwriter is going to kick that back about, you know, a week before closing because they don't have the required reserves and that type of thing. So we're seeing a lot of that too. So we're, we're able to keep them as well. Cool, Katie, do you have that TCA to share or should yeah, we uh, do, Greg? <clears throat> okay, I'll pull it up and I'll tell you what I can see it on my screen. Okay. Well, Greg, be ready to share a strategy in a gotcha. minute. Gotcha. Actually, you know what, give me a few more minutes because I got sidetracked and I went in. Okay, Greg, 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 you're up, you're up, Greg. Okay, cool, so. so what, uh, what are you doing? Yeah, so let me uh, go over here to Safari, sorry. And you don't need to like start by pulling it up. I mean, you can just start okay. by kind of yeah, so providing me, a narrative yeah, of what me, you're doing kinda, and pull let it me, up. Well, let me walk and talk here. So basically what I've got is, um, is a couple scenarios recently. One, uh, you know, we don't have really a need for seller buy down right now. We did uh, for about a six month period last year. Um, we, we have not been able to really use that um, you know, recently. So, you know, in, in our market, it's more competitive. So I deal with a lot of first time home buyers, a first time home here in the Seattle market is running 350 to 450. So I know in a lot of markets, that's, that's a jumbo loan, but, uh, in our market, that's a first time home buyer. So you can imagine people are coming to the table. Maybe they're in their, their late twenties, uh, they haven't had a chance to save up a lot of money. Um, and uh, can you see the screen there? Not, not yet. I'll tell okay. you when I see it. Okay. Just share the, the green box where it yeah. says share. Got it. Okay. I'm just trying to figure. Here we go. Cool. Okay. Now you see it? We see it. Cool. All right. So... <clears throat> What we are dealing with a lot of times is people who haven't had a chance to save up a lot of money. Maybe they just got done paying off their student loans. Um, you know, they're getting their first jobs. So they don't have a lot of money. And so in our market, you know, getting a seller to pay your closing costs, very tough. So I'm going to start with that one. I have two scenarios that recently helped, helped us get a buyer into homes. Um, this is a first time buyer looking to buy a $400,000 house. They've got enough money for their down payment, basically. Um, I think they had, in this case, they had like $14,000 or $15,000. They didn't have a lot. So obviously, they're not going to cover their closing costs. They're putting 3% down. We're doing a home ready loan. Um, and, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, other banks and, and other lenders are not offering solutions to that. They're basically telling the, the real estate agent, hey, you've got to go and you've got to get, you know, $8,000 in closing costs and negotiate that as part of the transaction. And so we obviously, we have a lot of first time buyers. We also have some new agents. And so in this case, this agent was a new agent. So she doesn't know any better. <laughs> she's, she's going, okay, well, I, I just know I got to go negotiate closing costs. So these people came to me, they were frustrated, they had lost out on about, you know, four or five different homes. And so I showed them here using Mortgage Coach again, side by side, hey, here's what this looks like. I can get you the 4.25, right? And get you that rate, your closing costs plus your uh, down payment, gonna come in right about $20,000 on this particular home. We can also go to 4.75, you're, well within your debt to income ratio to bump that payment up a little bit. What's more impactful for you getting in a home today 
okay, at a rate of 4.75 with the cash that you have or waiting to get more cash, which is gonna take you a while because you're not gonna get the seller to pay for closing costs. It's just not something that's happening in our market right now. So in this case, these people looked at it, it's $115 more a month, rates, you know, still a good rate, and they're able to get it, uh, that, that agent's gonna be able to sell this home, make a commission, rather than have this buyer that's sitting on the sidelines waiting to save up more money. Love it. So helped a realtor sell a home, and in community, we got to get good at elegantly shining a light on our value. When we help sell an incremental property, again, elegantly, you know, we don't want to, you know, pound our chest and be obnoxious. But when we present a strategy, and that strategy helps a family build wealth and create more value for the realtor when we create an incremental transaction. I love what Katie's doing. She's going and saying, hey, I'm going to help work your database and pull some transactions out of that database that you're not otherwise getting. So, so this, this is the way forward. You know, realtors are getting disrupted. Uh, I don't think we are getting disrupted, but there is massive innovation taking place in our space. And, and we are seeing a massive amount of rate shopping, price compression, and that means you need to amplify your value. And, and you need to document your value and you need to, it's why the total cost analysis is, is trending in the marketplace right now because this quantifies the impact of different strategies over different windows of time. And that's the other thing. Just become obsessed with the value of your advice over three years, five years, and 15 years. That's, that's the difference. Loan officers focus on monthly payment. And today, mortgage planners, mortgage coaches, focus on future timeframes. That's where the value is created. And, and realtors don't think like this. They're transactional. Families don't think like this. Other loan officers don't think like this. But if you're going to kill it in today's market, and if you're going to have the next decade be better than the past decade, you need to start thinking around impact over time. Uh, guys, any questions for Greg or any comments to the strategy you shared? You know, you're, yeah, Greg, yeah, no, yeah. I, I like it. I, I like what Greg stays in his space. You, you know what I mean? Meaning he's the expert, you know, in that space. And that's what you're saying, Dave, is moving forward, you have to be the go-to guy or gal in that space and be known for that. And I think that's key that he stays versus just moving all around the place, you know. So, I mean, there's longevity sitting in that space and being the king or queen there. I think kudos to you, Greg, and that's why you're so successful. You're, you're focused, singular, maybe double focused on certain things in your market, and you're killing it. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's also adapting to the market. And one thing I got from the interview with Jim McQuaig that Dave did yesterday is uh, Jim, you know, said he asks realtors, you know, why, why should they – earn 3% of the purchase price and that he's yet to have a filter really, you know, articulate that. And I think that's why you end up with like Keller, Keller Williams, you know, coming out with their own mortgage company is because they're having a hard time justifying 3%. So now they come out and they say, Oh, it's okay. We have a mortgage company that's going to give you a thousand dollars off your closing costs. That's why you should pay us three percent, right? So they've got it all twisted up. And I and and what I showed here in our market, this agent is able to close on a four hundred thousand dollar home. You know, three percent. That's twelve thousand dollars in commission that she got here. Do you think somebody's going to give her twelve thousand dollars in commission? because you know they got a thousand dollars off their closing costs no no that's not helping them sell homes right so this is the kind of thing that i'm talking about the second one dave i have one more i can share real quick uh, real real quick but, before you yeah. do that yep. i want to make sure that you heard what he said and if you listen to jim the quick interview and i'm glad you called it out jim says hey i asked realtors how do you justify your commission and, and ask them, how is it going out there? You know, are, you, are your commissions getting challenged? Have you seen compression? You know, are you, you know, if you're talking to a listing agent, are, 
are you getting, you know, having the same experience today as you were three years from now, three years ago? And, and what do you think the next two, three years are going to be? So here's the deal. If, if they say, I'm doing as well today as I was three years ago, and I am not at all worried about three years from now, well, don't go into the rat. You know, based off their belief system, you're like trying to change their, you know, their religion. So, but if they're saying, hey, you know what? Three years ago, it was better. And yeah, I'm concerned about the next two to three years. Now you come in, well, how are you, how are you, you know, when you do get challenged on that, what are you saying and how does that sound? And to Jim's point, like you listen to the interview, he's like, I have yet to have a realtor crush it. They're not, they're not crushing it. And so um, he also gave a messaging tool. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but I posted it. It's called like the four gaps um, in the e EOS, explanation of services. Uh, by the way, everybody, that was another takeaway. I would, I would um, schedule a mastermind with some of your realtors or even schedule some time with your realtors to say, hey, let's work on our expl explanation of services together. Let's, let's really get this nailed. And like Katie, to your point, you said, hey, I'm more and more concerned about Big Bang. You know, get together with your realtors. You know, who are they concerned about? Who are you concerned about? And work on your explanation of services better so that you're both showing up with value and you're also showing up as better partners. Uh, so anyways, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, we got about 20 more minutes. But great. what's your next strategy? Yeah, so just wanted to share this one because this just happened. Um, you know, as you are in a hot market, as we all know, uh, what's the next thing we deal with? Occasionally we get a low appraisal, right? Because everybody's trying to push the price. So we're a very that, hot. Does that market. happen to anybody, by the way? Like, yeah. if, if, you know, give us a like. First of all, if you're getting takeaways to this and you're watching it on Facebook live or recording, give it a like, give us engagement so we know we're bringing value. But yeah, that, that happens from time to so, time. Yeah. So here's the deal. When, I don't see a new TCA, by the way. Did you put up um, a new one? I just clicked on it. Yeah. It's such a oh, okay. little breeze. Oh, it, I got it. It's new. Okay. There we go. I got it. So I'm slow. That's all right. No, no sweat. So uh, this one, you know, I, my favorite is when you say, hey, you know, we've got a low appraisal. Oh my gosh, I've been selling real estate for 30 years. I've never had a low appraisal, right? That always happens. You know, it's just terrible. The appraiser's terrible. He should be fired, you know, all that stuff, right? So once you get through the initial emotions, which I always, here's what I do. I always break that news to the listing agent because I don't want my selling agent who's referred me this client to have to take on that person's emotion, right? And then they also get to tell me I suck instead of telling them how much I suck because our appraisal came in low, right? So in this case, I talked to the, the realtor. Yes, she had been selling real estate for 30 years. No, she'd never have had a low appraisal again. So it was cool. We went through that 15 minutes. And then I said, look, I think we can work through this. Well, good. You better be able to work through it, right? So let her cool down, went, looked for other comps. There were no other comps. There were no comps to support the price, which in this case was 384 950 and so let that cool off for a day. And then I came back and I said, hey, here's the deal. I went to the buyers and I said, look, we're, this, they're really digging their heels in. They're not going to drop their price down the full 15000 that it came in low. But they'd be willing to drop it down. I think they were going to drop down eight and we would come up with seven or something like that. Again, these are first time buyers. They don't have any extra money. They can't come to the table with any more money. So... What I did is I used Mortgage Coach. They were freaked out. Buyers were gonna walk, sellers were gonna walk, okay? I used Mortgage Coach to show, here's what the new price would be, okay? So we're going from 385 basically to 377. We increased the rate by a quarter to cover the addition, to give them a credit towards their closing costs. So you see the rate's a little bigger there. So we, we made up the difference that they were gonna have to make up. So you'll see the cash to close stayed the same and the payment difference is only $12 a month, right? So guess what? I have a client for life, 
I have a selling agent realtor for life and I have a listing agent that thinks I'm pretty good too. She doesn't, she's probably not my biggest fan, but you know, we got through it. And so again, helping realtors close transactions, helping home buyers who don't have a bunch of money laying around buy homes in a very tough market. Yeah. And, and you made it super clear and straightforward. So I, I love it. Any questions, uh, Katie, for, for Greg before we, you pull up a strategy and we go through it? No, I don't think I, I don't have any questions. I just want to say again, Greg, awesome. I never actually thought about doing this for a low appraisal. <laughs> and yeah, I've had a few. So I really appreciate this. I'm certainly going to use this strategy. And um, again, Dave, it goes back to what I was saying in the beginning of this call. It's um, the value that you bring. It's all these strategies and these ideas that you give to me, you give to other, the community, obviously. And um, when I started four years ago, I was so diligent in watching these coaching um, videos that you, that you would put out there every Tuesday, every Friday. I was on, and even in my downtime, I, I would watch these. So um, thanks for having the best on these calls, and thanks for your contribution, Scott. And uh, Greg certainly learned from, from both of you. And I, again, I love that low appraisal. Did everybody hear that, by the way? Katie learned a lot of what she's doing to drive her success today from watching Mortgage Coach YouTube channel and engaging in the community. So uh, for all you new loan officers tuned in, uh, you know, learning from the nation's best loan officers, this is the place to do it, Mortgage Coach channel. So Katie, why don't you share your screen and share a strategy? And then Scott, let's be ready to wrap up uh, showing how many homes are are seller buy down ready in a few different markets. And okay. When I see your screen, Katie, I'll let you know. Okay. I see it. You see it? Okay. So this one I just happened to pull up. Um, again, I use them on every single transaction and every transaction is going to be different as we all know. So, this one, I'm actually competing with a uh, builder's lender on. So I wanted to uh, show the client basically what our pricing look like with a uh, credit, a lender credit to cover the closing costs because they don't have the money that they need for the closing costs. So it was basically matching what the builder's lender um, was giving them. So yeah, this is, there's no side by side, again, only because they want to see, they don't have closing costs and they wanted to see what that monthly payment was gonna look like, and then two, what their cash to close was gonna be. Um, and this goes back to what I was saying about the relationship. So I got this lead from one of my realtor partners about a week ago. Yeah, it's Tuesday, so I think I got them back on, on last Tuesday. So I got this lead, they found new construction, they fell in love with the home, they wanna write an offer, and of course the builder is requiring that they use their lender. I reached out anyway and had a pleasant conversation and got nowhere with it. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I followed up with the clients and I was really responsive, um, really because I wanted that agent to know that I was taking care of this, this client and she's a newer agent. So um, I was responsive. I was answering their questions on a, a Friday night at seven o'clock. The builder's lender never responded to them and said they could coordinate a meeting or a phone conversation today. Um, these are VA buyers that are relocating from Las Vegas and they need to close by, I think, the 13th of June. So um, going back to the relationship, it's all about creating this relationship with, with the agent. It's about creating the, the relationship with the, um, with the client, obviously. And the fact that I was responding on a Friday evening and I gave them the information that they needed in a way that's easy for them to understand I can almost guarantee I'm going to get that client and I'm going to get a phone call later this afternoon saying that they're going to move forward with that. Um, had I not used this mortgage coach tool, um, his, his response to me when, when I sent him this presentation was, this is exactly what we needed. Thank you so much. And again, the way it's presented, it's easy for them to understand. They didn't have any questions. I didn't really need to walk them through it. Um, you know, I, I do initially when I send this to clients, I walk them through where to find the information. So I tell them to go to more info, make sure that you click on the tab of payment breakdown, and then also the closing cost uh, tab as well. So just hey, scroll down way. to the bottom real quick. I want to see if it, uh, see what's at the bottom. 
Well, did you get that, Katie? Scroll all the way down to the bottom. All, all the way down to the bottom of the actual total cost analysis. Maybe I am having a hard time on my laptop. <clears throat> yeah, not the more yeah. information, but but just uh, oh, the actual at the bottom going. of your total. Yeah. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so so guys, check it out. You know, social survey now integrates with the total cost analysis. How slick is this? You know, you, you gave the client exactly what they needed to have clarity and it's got your um, five-star reviews integrated from social survey. So super slick. If you're on this call and you have social survey, uh, let your um, managers know that you'd love to get it activated with Mortgage Coach. Uh, or you can email social survey at mortgagecoach.com if you want to get someone from our team to help you get this activated. Uh, and then scroll to the very top. I just, I just guys want to connect the dots. Like if you want to kill it in this market and you want the next decade to be better than the last one, you know, personally branded advice, company logo, Katie's photo, very intentional about her brand. If you follow her on Facebook, she's just killing it in terms of how she shows up online. And then she's delivering not too much information, not too little information, just exactly what the client needs to make an informed decision. Now, Katie, we've only got about nine more minutes. I'm not gonna ask you to pull up another TCA, but if you could just riff, you said, hey, I'm working a realtor's database, you know, and I know when I interview loan officers on that, it's like, oh, I'm gonna find the first time home buyers in that. I'm gonna find the move up home buyers. I'm gonna uncover some people that want to invest in real estate. And, you know, but what are the most common strategies in mortgage coach you're, you're doing as you're, you're mining realtors database for opportunities. And you can stop sharing your screen anytime. Yeah, I think it's, um, let's make sure I'm doing this right here, sorry. Uh, Just put, stop sharing. Okay, so I think um, when, I'm, when I'm working a database, I'm not being intentional with um, knowing what their situation is. So it's figuring out what they need from us meaning what do they need from me on the finance side? What do they need from the realtor side? Do they wanna know what the market's doing and then has done since they inquired on this property two years ago? Or are they having some concerns about taking on this big financial decision of, of purchasing a home? So I don't go into you know, making these calls with any particular strategy of first time home buyers or move up buyers. I'm just dialing and I'm calling these people, trying to create opportunity really for the realtor um, most importantly, I want to make sure that I'm giving these people the information that they need. You know, what is it? What's in the way of you buying? Or, you know, what's changed? So I'm, I'm trying to, again, really have meaningful conversations with people. When I can add value, then they will open up. They will know that I'm not selling. Um, I'm creating that relationship and I'm giving them something that they need so that, so that they, you know, feel good about this decision. So... Um, but as far as how I'm using the um, mortgage coach, so you've got rent versus own, right? So any first time home buyers, you send them a rent versus own. Obviously, that's only helpful if you know how much they're paying in rent. But if you can have that conversation to say, hey, you probably know a lot of the benefits of home ownership. Let me send you this presentation. Do you mind if I ask you a few quick questions about your current situation so you can see it in numbers? That's a great way. Um, to again build that relationship and hopefully create some opportunities and present love, them in a way. Love, love that. So, guys, we're going to be doing more calls on you know how to get a realtor to give you their database. Like, what's that conversation like? What are the strategies so you can say, "Hey, realtor, I'm going to help turn your real, your database into gold," and then go. And this is how. So, I am going to be doing more calls on that. Stay tuned. There are some really awesome tools from a data perspective. Sales Boomerang is awesome to be able to say, hey, I'm getting these alerts. Um, HomeBot is awesome. You know, Mortgage Coach is amazing. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to be having that conversation uh, more. Uh, Scott, let's, I've got, to, we've got a hard stop in six minutes. Remember, folks, if you're getting value, give us a like. Make a comment down below. Scott, coming in hot. Uh, why don't you show these guys how um, many seller buy-down opportunities there are 
in their various markets and give you feel free to give everybody a pitch on your uh your seller buy down websites yep yep so a couple real quick just a 30 second here's that presentation we uh, from sunday and so this is just a family friend going after a house 942 i put this presentation together she wanted to come in low um, so first column is a full price offer. Second is that price reduction. Third, I took 18,000 in a seller buy down and I got their payment as if they were buying it at 873. So that was a huge aha for them. They're going, wait a minute, you know, so they're trying to tack price to lower their budget, you know, get into their budget. And it wasn't qualification, it was just a personal budget. And so when I showed them this, it kind of changed the whole mind shift of them. Even if this was, so let's, let's spin it to where you guys are presenting an agent and use Jim's example from yesterday. Seller spent 18, agent saved 50. There's 50,000 that we saved in this transaction. Ultimately, I'm gonna say, when, we, when this one opens and it closes, we're gonna save 50,000 for this buyer. It's a for sale by owner, house is free and clear. Every dime counts in this one. So that's your buy down. Let's move into, oh, and, and then- And remember everybody, Shine a light on your value, you know, to the consumer. Say, look, my advice saved you X. What you got next? And then where she, see, uh, Paula being a teacher, as my wife is, it's all about education. Well, well, I need to know more about this. And it's a great video and all that stuff. So I actually sent them my link to my seller buy down site. And then she got in and started clicking. There's case studies and different examples how it's for buyers. She was, I know she was in that because she actually asked more questions. Everything's in there. So I became social proof and backed up what I was just saying above and beyond the presentation I built them. So let's so real, pivot. Real quick, before you go off oh. of that, Scott, I love the way you and your team integrated Mortgage Coach in your website. So community yeah. out there, we, we love to see Mortgage Coach adding value within your websites, within your YouTube channels. If you ever want to get my advice or our marketing team's advice, share like, hey, this is how I'm using Mortgage Coach to educate, generate leads, provide online education, and share that in our group, and we'll give feedback on it. And then, guys, connect with Scott. I mean, he's building a tribe within a tribe. If you want to be the seller buy down king or queen, or you know, the mayor of this strategy in your market, connect with Scott sure. offline, and he'll show you more. Yeah. Let's look at let's look at both of them real quick. So here's here's Seattle. So I just bebopping around Zillow, pulled all the junk away, and got it into a 60, 90 days. So here's some price cuts in here. They and so what I would do for like in this one, this was a this is a post cut uh, presentation. Meaning I'm gonna contact this lady here, this agent, and say. And by the way, I'm licensed in Washington, so I would cut. I'm not going to. I would contact her and say, hey. I want to help you sell your property. I know you did a price cut. One, I'm going to show her what that actually did for the buyer. I'll show her to what the seller buy down. It's a third of that, right? So we'll call it 18,000 somewhere in there um, or 15,000. So I can show her for 15 to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm wedging myself into that relationship knowing when we do it again, we're going to do a buy down, not a continued price cut. Because remember the ratio guys, it's three to one. And I'm going to show her a report where the 15 could have had the same impact as 46 and just so, zipping so, around the so, neighborhood. So how many, but, how many are in that market? Like, I mean, is there 10 of them? There's a lot. You, know, you just jump on Zillow and they're everywhere. And then here's another one. Here's a lower price point, right? So 171 days caught my eye. So I want to know what's going on. Well, a Zestimate, I mean, it's saying that we don't believe this, but it's, 30,000 under his estimate, what's going on? So I'm gonna have a conversation with Michelle here and saying, cause her next move really close is gonna, the next move is gonna have a price reduction, right? Cause that's all they know is get into that relationship and say, no, your next move is actually a seller buy down. Let me help you put the present today, presentation together and then let me market this and, and just keep going. Um, here's one, so it is $70,000 price kit. It's under value if we're gonna believe his estimate, right? So, um, so guys, and then Katie, we, we, we let's do go ahead and look at Katie's real quick. Katie's, Katie's is everywhere. These are the yeah, ones that if I was Katie, I'm going to go into these markets and start putting presentations together and sitting down with these Shelly's of the world. And then I'll let you go. There it is. 
And, and we could go on. We covered this in detail a couple of Tuesdays ago, link down below. And, you know, you could just go to Zillow and pull up every house that's either had a price cut or has been on the market for 90 days or more. And those are leads. So at a minimum, every mortgage coach in the market you're in, in the city you're in, go and look <clears throat> how many homes have been on the market for 90 days or more or how many homes have had price cuts. And those are leads for you to go and say, look, I am a creative finance specialist. I specialize in helping realtors not get the loans closed, sell more homes. And, and for you listing agents, I specialize in helping you avoid price reductions and sell homes faster with creative mortgage strategies. I specialize in that. So there, there's opportunities. And remember guys, there's riches in niches, and this is a niche. Uh, so in some markets, it's a bigger niche than others. Some markets, it's not as big, but there's still some, some gold in just about every market. So guys, hopefully you got lots of value. Share this with your mortgage team. Every Tuesday, nine o'clock, we're doing an awesome call. Every Friday, we're having a mastermind. Greg, thank you for showing up, buddy. Thanks, by, by the way, Greg, did, did he did he open your eyes? Like maybe there's some sort yes. of buy down opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. God, I appreciate that because I'm gonna go check that out a little. Yeah, <laughs> Katie, maybe some seller buy down opportunity in Sacramento. Just maybe. This is this is gonna get me to 20 originations. Thanks so much, Scott. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Scott, I'm licensed in both these states. So if you don't do it, I'm right behind you then. No, no, <laughs> on, no, 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 no threats, no, no threats. No, I know, I'll, but I'll help. If you two want to reach out to me individually, I'll help you. I appreciate Thanks, it. Man. Thanks, guys. You guys should both check out his websites, man. Take care, everybody. For sure. Right, have a good one. Thanks.